Howdy folks, here to talk to you today about choosing a handgun that's right for you. A friend of mine is turning 21 here pretty soon and he's been trying to decide what his first handgun is going to be. And it got me thinking about a few years ago I went through the same thing, uh, trying to decide uh, what my first handgun purchase was going to be. And it's uh, pretty mind-boggling. You go to the gun shop, you got a lot of different choices uh, in front of you. As you can see here, I got a few different uh, choices laid out on the table. And what I'd like to help you do today is uh, help you decide uh, what your first handgun purchase might be and uh, how to decide what one is right for you. You have a few different op couple different options. You have uh, your revolvers right here and you have your semi-automatics. Um, you also have a couple of uh, options within the semi-automatics. You have your striker-fired handguns, and you have your hammer-fired handguns. It can be broken down into two categories. Uh, you have your internal, uh, external hammers and your internal hammers, and you also have your double-action, single-action, and you have your single-action only. And we'll get into that more in a minute as to uh, what exactly that all means. But first of all, first, very first question you should ask yourself is how do you plan to use the handgun? Do you plan to carry it every day concealed? Um, do you plan to just keep it at your house? Um, keep it in a uh, bedside table and use it for home defense? Uh, so that's one of the questions you've got to answer. Uh, reason being, if you're going to choose something that uh, is concealable, you're probably going to end up choosing something a little smaller uh, that can be uh, concealed in you know, all different uh, climates uh, and uh, weather conditions depending on what you're wearing. Um, if you're a woman and you want to carry it in your purse, um, you have got to take that into account. You also got to take into account what kind of holster you're going to be wearing. It's going to be inside the waistband, outside the waistband, um, shoulder holster, holster shirt, ankle holster, all, all kinds of different options for you. Um, but basically I'm here today to help you decide maybe what your first handgun purchase is going to be. Once you decide how you're going to use it, um, once you're at your gun shop and you're trying to find something that, um, in that line that you've decided to look in, uh, you're going to be looking for what fits in your hand. Um, how does it shoot? And if you plan to carry it, is it comfortable to carry? Is it too bulky? Is it too heavy? Because if you get something, um, it kind of defeats the purpose if it's no fun to carry and you end up not carrying it anymore. All these guns are unloaded, all the actions are open, there's no rounds in the magazines. I have a few rounds here to demonstrate um, your different calibers. Uh, your major calibers you're going to be looking at if you're looking at semi-automatics. Um, what ones that the ammo is fairly easy to get, you got your 45, you got your 40 S and W, and you got your 9mm. Uh, 9mm Luger, 9mm Parabellum, it's the same thing. Um, your 45 is going to be your 45 ACP, which stands for Automatic Colt Pistol. Um, your uh, other options, you might see uh, 380s. I don't have any 380s here. Um, I figure that uh, they make guns small enough in 9mm to conceal. I don't see a point in going down as small as 380. But there are some great uh, pistols out there uh, made in 380. And if you find one that works for you, that's great. Um, we'll, we'll get into, uh, we'll start over here. What I have here is the uh, Breda 92F. Um, this is your standard M9 pistol that any of you who are in the military in the last 20 years, you've probably seen this or shot it. Um, this is going to be a double action, single action, hammer fired uh, firearm. Uh, it is clear. There's no round in the chamber, uh, no magazine in the magazine well. Um, I'll demonstrate for you here how this works. Um, this is going to be your decocking lever or your safety. Um, and this is going to be your hammer. And by um, double action, single action, I mean you can cock the hammer and you can fire it that way. You can also fire it just by pulling the trigger. And that's cycling the trigger will bring the hammer back and back forward again. And then what will happen is after your first round is fired, your slide will slide to the rear and it will cock that hammer for you for your additional shot. So that's what's meant by double action and single action. You have the option uh, to do both. Um, this gun is one of my best shooting guns. It's uh, one of my most accurate. And that, the reason being is it's uh, a little bit heavier. It's an all metal frame. It has a little bit of a longer barrel. And 
And uh, what you'll find in uh, shooting handguns is the longer, the heavier the gun, uh, that absorbs the more, more recoil. And the longer the barrel, the more accurate it's going to be. Um, so this, this gun, I use it, uh, it's my secondary uh, duty weapon. Um, I use it, keep it as a backup. Um, this particular gun doesn't have any rails, any options to mount any lights or anything like that. Um, Beretta does make a couple of newer models of the 92, um, that, the M9A1 that has a rail, and I believe the M9A3 just came out that also has a rail. Um, but this is, this is a great gun. It shoots really well. This particular one is made in Italy. Um, they do also make them in the United States. Um, the M9 ones for government use are made here in the United States. And I believe you can get those at your local gun shop as well. Um, this uh, normally comes with a 15 round magazine. I live in one of those uh, communist liberal states that has uh, arbitrary magazine uh, restrictions that tell you how many rounds you can carry in your magazine and how many uh, magazines you're uh, how many rounds your magazine is allowed to hold. Uh, so this one's a 10 round magazine, but uh, normally from the factory, or if you live in one of the free states, uh, you can get it with a 15 round magazine standard. What you have here is a Smith & Wesson. This is an M&P. It's clear, no round in the chamber, no magazine in the magazine well. Uh, this is your full size M&P. It comes in nine millimeter and 40 Smith & Wesson. Uh, this is a 40 Smith & Wesson uh, specimen here. Uh, this is a polymer frame striker fired handgun and uh, of all the handguns I have here This is one of the most comfortable to hold uh, It is one of the uh, better shooting guns that I have here um, Because it is a striker fired. It's got a little bit of a mushier trigger uh, The difference between this one and the Beretta is you do not have any sort of hammer uh, to worry about um, All the the striker fired action is internal you don't have to cock a hammer. You don't have to worry about whether it's double action or single action. You don't have to worry about carrying it locked and cocked, which I'll get into in a second. Um, but this gun is pretty cool. It's pretty versatile. It's a relative newcomer to the market in the last few years. Uh, it does have a uh, rail on the front. And what I have here is I have a uh, Streamlight TLR1 mounted to it. Um, and this one is a great tactical gun. I use this as my primary duty uh, carry option. Uh, once again, this is a... Uh, Comes with a, I believe, a 15 round magazine uh, standard. Uh, this is a 10 round magazine, pretty goofy. They basically have a block at the end of it uh, to reduce your uh, capacity to make it compliant with one of the uh, communist state laws around here. Uh, what you got here is a Glock. This is your, uh, it's clear. Uh, you, this is your, uh, also a polymer frame. Uh, striker fired weapon um, This one happens to be a 45 ACP uh, This is your model 30 um, They're pretty the popular uh, versions of uh, the Glock you might have heard of or the Glock 19 the Glock 17 those are your two uh, uh, bigger sized um, nine millimeters um, This one I have a uh, TLR 4 mounted to um, This has a light and a laser um, This one's pretty cool uh, I keep this as a little bit of a thicker gun. It's not great for concealed carry, uh, but it does uh, have a 10 round capacity for uh, 45 ACP. I keep this gun as a home defense gun, keep it in the bedside table. Um, it uh, shoots pretty well and uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty sweet gun. Moving on, this is a, here is actually my first concealed carry gun I ever bought. It's gonna be a Ruger LC9. Uh, Ruger is an American company uh, based out of Arizona. Uh, it's clear. Uh, this gun is hammer fired, but it is a internal hammer. So you do not have the option of double action or single action. Every, well, it would be uh, uh, double action only, uh, technically. Uh, every time you pull the trigger, you have to, that action of pulling the trigger activates this internal hammer, brings it back and forward again in one motion. And uh, the side effect of that is that it has a very long, very heavy trigger pull. And the problem I ran it, this is a great gun, it's uh, very thin, conceals easily, um, has a seven round magazine. Um, I, I like them, you can get them flush mounted, or I like them with the, the uh, finger uh, tip extension, um, so I can get all three of my fingers on the, on the weapon. Um, but the problem I ran into with this one is it is a pain in the rear end to shoot. Um, I'm not an incredibly great shot, but this one, 
um, being so lightweight, a short barrel, um, this is a nine millimeter, uh, but uh, problem was with that trigger pull, um, I was all over the place with it. So I ended up um, moving on from this one and getting a little bit uh, higher end gun, um, that being the SIG. This is the 938, this is also a nine millimeter. Um, this is a little bit more expensive of a gun. This one is also, uh, it has a external hammer and it is single action only. That means in order to fire this gun, you have to cock the hammer first. Um, this gun is clear, no rounds in the chamber, no magazine. Um, this gun comes with a couple of uh, different uh, magazine options. It comes with the flush mount magazine, uh, pretty great for concealed carry. And it also comes with what I always carry it with is because I like to have those three fingers on it, um, the finger grip extension. Uh, this one is the uh, 938 BRG. It comes with the Hogue overmolded uh, rubber grips. So it's a really comfortable fit in your hand for a very small gun. Um, so like I said, um, you have a little more complication uh, with the mechanism here uh, compared to some of the striker fired options. Um, but uh, it is a little bit more accurate because it is a metal frame, um, a little bit heavier. Um, it's a fairly accurate gun. Here I have your, uh, the little brother, uh, this gun right here. This is going to be your um, Smith & Wesson M&P 40 Compact. This also comes with a couple of magazine options. It comes with your flush mount, which doesn't allow you to get your third finger uh, on the end of the magazine, or it comes with one with a finger extension that allows you to get your uh, hand on there. Now this is a very comfortable gun. This gun also comes in uh, nine millimeter and it is the uh, striker fired uh, polymer frame. So let's talk a little bit about how to choose between um, all these different um, options. Your striker fired polymer frame guns are going to be um, right around 500 bucks or so. Um, that goes for the Smith & Wessons and the Glocks. Uh, they're all going to be around that price point. This Ruger here, you can find it uh, on sale for in the $300 range. Um, now, Ruger has since come out with a little bit better option, which I have not shot yet, but it is a striker-fired version of this gun, which alleviates the trigger pull issue um, that I was having. Now, I haven't shot that gun yet, but I am assuming um, because it is striker-fired, that's going to be a little bit better of a um, gun to shoot. Uh, problem with that trigger pull being um, as heavy as it is and as small as the gun is um, when you're pulling that trigger you have a tendency to jerk that gun around and uh, be all over the place on the target. Uh, here you go here's your uh, a version of a revolver. Uh, this is going to be a Smith & Wesson 586. It's chambered in 357 Magnum. A uh, cool thing about uh, 357 Magnum guns is they will also shoot 38 Special. Uh, which is a little bit lighter of a load, a little bit uh, easier to shoot, doesn't bounce around as much, not as much recoil. And uh, this gun is going to be a double action and single action. So you can pull the trigger and the hammer activates, or you can cock the hammer first, you have a lot shorter trigger pull, and but this one you have to um, cock the hammer each time if you want to uh, do it like that. So, calibers. You got your uh, 45 ACP. Uh, it's a big, fat, uh, slow round. You have your hollow point version. That is a uh, federal uh, jacketed hollow point. You got your Hornady uh, critical defense, critical duty round um, as well. You have your 40 Smith & Wesson. That's your standard uh, ball ammunition uh, for target practice. Then you have your defense round. This is also going to be a Hornady critical defense. And uh, then you got your 9mm. A little bit smaller. There's your standard ball round uh, that you use in the military. And you have your Federal Hydroshock uh, jacketed hollow point as well. Uh, you're going to see different grains, different weights of bullets. Uh, your standard uh, 
Target ammunition for the uh, 45 is going to be a 230 grain bullet. Your 40 Smith & Wesson is going to be a 180 or 165 grain bullet. And your 9mm, you're going to see 115 grain, 124 grain. You also have 147 grain, which are a little bit heavier. Here you got your 357 Magnum. This is a Federal Hydroshock uh, hollow point. This is your standard uh, soft nose, lead nose, uh, flat bullet for target practice. And here it's going to be a little bit shorter of a round, doesn't have as much powder in it, doesn't have to pack as much of a punch. It's going to be your 38 special. This is just your standard flat nose uh, target round. So, choosing the one that's right for you. Um, if you're going to be going uh, just for home defense, um, you're not going to be carrying it uh, concealed, concealed uh, around with you all the time. I would probably recommend going with a little bit bigger of a gun. Um, reason being, like I mentioned before, the heavier and uh, longer the barrel, the more accurate it is and easier it is to be to shoot. You're also going to be able to, with the bigger guns, have a little bit more of a capacity. Of course, if you live in one of these common states uh, that limits to you to how many rounds you can carry, that won't really matter very much. Uh, but if you uh, uh, live in one of the free states, you have the option to choose uh, a gun that can carry, as much, like a Glock 17, and carry uh, 15, 16, 17 rounds um, in your magazine. Uh, so I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna go with a uh, larger gun, get uh, with something to carry, just keep it home. I would go with a larger gun, um, one, something like this. Uh, you also have your 1911s, uh, which are a little bit of a, well, they were, they've been around since 1911. Um, they are a, uh, which is going to be a single action only, uh, hammer fired, external hammer uh, type of gun. Um, I would recommend a beginner uh, steer away from the 1911s at first. Uh, they are a little bit more complicated. Um, they are, they're a great gun, uh, but with so many other options on the market these days, um, Getting something that's a little simpler, uh, like a Glock or, a, or an M&P, um, that's striker fired, there's not a lot of uh, hammers and safeties to worry about. Um, you basically cock it, you pull the trigger, it goes bang. Uh, they're pretty easy to take apart and put back together. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, the what's inside this gun, uh, what makes it work. Um, I talked a, bit, a little, little bit about the external features, but let's take it apart and I'll show you what's inside. Uh, there you have your frame. That's field stripping it and break it down um, for cleaning. Here's your spring. Every one of these semi-automatic guns is going to have a spring and it's going to have a rod. All right, that's the uh, guide for the spring. This is going to be your slide and this is going to be your barrel assembly. There's your barrel. And there's your slide. Every one of these is going to break down into the exact same parts. Uh, the way they come apart is a little bit different. Uh, with the Glocks you have to uh, pull the trigger first and uh, a little bit more difficult to take apart. Uh, Smith & Wesson has also come apart a little bit different. You need a, a pin to uh, pull one of the levers down. Um, and the uh, SIG is a little bit of a pain to uh, take apart as well. Uh, but they all break down into these same exact uh, parts and pieces. So well, that's one thing you're going to have to be able to do. You're going to have to be able to learn. Um, you can watch YouTube videos on how to uh, take them apart and put them back together. It's called field stripping. Um, you can also get, when you buy the gun, your local gun shop uh, should absolutely, before you walk out of the door with that gun, teach you how it comes apart and goes back together. Uh, because every time you shoot it, it is a good idea to clean it. In fact, when you bring it home from the gun shop, um, it should have been test fired by the manufacturer. So it will be dirty and will have some shipping grease on it. So before you go out to the range for the first time and fire it, it is a good idea to shoot it. Or to clean it, rather. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about, um, you have your uh, slide stop release. So for all semi-automatics, you're going to have this uh, little lever here, and that locks the slide to the rear. Uh, that will happen automatically when you are shooting and your magazine runs dry. Uh, all these semi-automatics should automatically lock to the rear. And what you can then just do is pop your magazine in with your fresh rounds and let it slide forward. Some uh, 
pistol instructors will tell you, don't do it that way. Uh, grab it and let it slam home. Couple options there. So, let's talk about calibers. Your calibers, um, the reason you would uh, choose one or the other is going to be capacity and also going to be stopping power. Now you're going to have a hundred different schools of thought on what your, uh, which is better to have more capacity or more stopping power. You're going to hear uh, stories about the FBI, um, the Miami shootout back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, where they were all carrying uh, 38 specials, 9 millimeters, and they were outgunned. So they decided to get, get a bigger cartridge uh, with more stopping power, so they went with the 10 millimeter. Uh, the 10 millimeter was breaking the frame on their Glocks, so they ended up, uh, Smith & Wesson invented a caliber uh, specifically for them. Um, basically, it took a 10 millimeter case and uh, put a little bit less powder in it. It's a little bit different, and uh, you have your 40 Smith & Wesson now. For the past uh, 20, 30 years, almost 30 years, the FBI has been carrying uh, 40 Smith & Wesson, uh, Glock uh, 22s and 23s. And now, just recently, they decided uh, bullets are better. Uh, they did their ballistic tests again, and they can go back to 9mm uh, because there's uh, plenty of good ammo for 9mm, and you get a little bit more, uh, little bit more capacity with the smaller rounds. So, deciding on which one is good for you. Here's a couple of smaller guns, uh, three of them here that are going to be great for concealed carry. You can carry these in an inside the waistband holster. Uh, very easy, easy to conceal, just wearing a t-shirt or, or a light shirt. Um, not so much with your bigger guns. Uh, they're a little bit harder to hide. Um, but decisions up to you. You can also uh, decide on a uh, revolver. Uh, there's uh, plenty of little uh, snub nose uh, 38s out there. Um, some of them are uh, single action only, uh, some of them are hammerless, uh, they're fairly easy to conceal. You're limited though uh, with reloading. Um, obviously you have to take these rounds and put them in one by one or uh, use a uh, some sort of a speed loader. Um, whereas with carrying concealed uh, or carrying a semi-automatic you can carry a spare magazine with you, which I always do. Uh, it's pretty easy to throw a spare magazine in your pocket and if you run dry uh, throw another magazine in. Uh, do a combat reload. That's pretty quick and easy to do. So, making that decision. Got to decide what's important to you. How do you plan to use it? How does it fit in your hand? How does it shoot? Uh, what round, what uh, caliber are you going to go with? Uh, is, is capacity important to you? Is stopping power important to you? Really, uh, honestly, um, as far as the argument of stopping power, um, you, can, you can read all about the tests the FBI has done. Um, everyone uh, is an expert and they're all going to tell you something different. Um, what I'll tell you is if you go with any of the mainstream calibers, 45, 40 Smith & Wesson, 9mm, there are, they may, all the ammo manufacturers make great ammunition, um, jacketed hollow point rounds, uh, critical defense rounds that are going to have the stopping power uh, that you need. Um, you also have a couple of uh, other calibers to choose from. You have your 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter which I mentioned, which uh, the ammo is a little more expensive. Uh, you're not going to find it as readily available. It's not quite as popular. Uh, you also have your 357 SIG, which is a uh, has been a fairly popular caliber for law enforcement for a few years now. Uh, basically, that is a uh, 40 Smith & Wesson case that is necked down just a little bit to fit a size 357 bullet and uh, that is a very popular caliber but once again the ammunition is quite expensive and not quite as readily available you also have a uh, uh, another caliber 45 gap which uh, is stands for glock automatic pistol uh, it is a special load that glock came up with that is not very popular uh, a couple of law enforcement agencies use it and once again it's hard to find and uh, uh, very expensive so what I would recommend is sticking to your three major food groups there, your 45, your 40, and your 9. Uh, choosing one of those and choosing a gun that uh, fits you well. Uh, make sure it shoots well. Watch out for issues like uh, internal hammers and long trigger pulls. Um, make sure you um, 
find something that's going to shoot accurately because what was the point of carrying the gun if you're not able to hit anything with it? Um, if it's not going to be comfortable to carry, uh, you're not going to be able to hit anything with it, there's no point in even buying it. So hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, hopefully it uh, aids you in your search. Um, I didn't get too crazy technical with uh, any of the uh, specifics, but uh, hopefully it helps you and uh, you're able to go into your local gun shop uh, with a little bit of knowledge and kind of know what you're looking for. So uh, have fun, enjoy, and uh, hopefully you don't end up with the addiction and uh, ended up uh, buying them all. Have a good day.